I play a lot of milsim games, whether it be transporting troops in Armour 3, learning how not to crash and burn in DCS, or just screwing around in squad, I will be playing a military focused game of some sort, it's just in my blood. But because most milsim games have loads of stuff happening at once, like particles, physics, vehicles, bullet simulation, weather and more, they are very CPU bound. So it was no surprise when I upgraded my GTX 1070 to an RTX 3070 Ti that I saw virtually no difference to my FPS in these games. My old but trusty i7-6700K was finally showing its age. And so this summer I took it upon myself to blow my savings before going back to uni, I know, smart choice right, and I built an updated rig for 2022. This video is aimed mainly at anyone out there who, like me, had the same gaming rig for a long long time, plays similar CPU heavy games like Armour and Daisy, and wants to know if it's worth upgrading. I've got video chapters turned on, so if you want to jump around to the bit you want, you can. Full disclosure first and foremost, I'm ashamed to say that I spent a total of £2,220.88 on this new rig, which also included the RTX 3070 Ti as well as the other specs I'm listing on screen now. I sold the parts of my old rig, which is now on screen, for about £600, which brings the overall total of the upgrade down to £1,620.88, which lets me sleep a little easier at night. Talking about expensive endeavours, with all those scalpers and RTX 4090 shortages nowadays, it can be hard to get hold of a gaming PC. So what about gaming on a mobile device? Way back when I did my Star Citizen review, I mentioned how I used to play military themed games on my iPod Touch because I didn't have a gaming PC. Today, if I'm away from my PC and I still want to scratch that military itch, Modern Warships has me covered. It's a free to play online game available on iOS and Android focused on realistic naval battles. If you've been sub to me for a while, you'll know that I've never really done any of these sorts of things on my channel. But what really caught my attention about this game was the money they're offering me. <laughs> no, but seriously, the thing which actually caught my attention was its combined arms approach to naval warfare. I like armour probably like you because it covers the full spectrum of military paraphernalia and the same applies to this game. In modern warships, you become the captain of over 30 warships and 200 weapon variations, meaning you'll never run out of options options to take enemies down. So as well as being able to command a massive naval destroyer, you can take to the air in a fighter jet, attack helicopter, so even the Armour 3 Blackfoot there as you can see, and wait for it, submarines! How many other mobile games give you air, sea and submarine combat? I also like the fact you have loads of different skins for ships, different locations and varied times of day as well as weather settings. And as you can see from the gameplay, it actually looks surprisingly good for a mobile game and even with it being on mobile if you did want to play on PC you could just use an emulator. When you combine the nice particle effects with the tactile sounds it all comes together to make you feel like you're truly at sea in charge of a huge warship. Download Modern Warships for free using the link down in the description. Use my promo code TOMA to get 3 days premium access, the USS Arle Burke and 100 upgrade points included. Thank you to Artstorm for working with me on this and thank you for supporting the channel. So back to the video. The main change you're going to see between these comparisons is the CPU. I'm going to try and keep my voiceovers to a minimum so you can come to your own informed conclusions about the FPS differences between these CPUs and I can just let some gameplay run in the background. Let's kick things off with Armour 3 single player on the opening campaign mission where there was roughly a 30 to 40 FPS jump between the Skylake and Alder Lake CPUs.
I'll also put up the Armour 3 helicopter showcase as that's got a fair bit of action going on. On the benchmark side of things, yet another armor benchmark gave me 30.5 FPS on my old build. Well, this was nearly doubled on the new build. In another Armour 3 benchmark, I saw an average of 98 FPS compared to 62. This netted me almost a 40 FPS increase. Now you might remember from my 3070 Ti video, there was a clip of me on Kavala Hospital. In this particular test, I had a 25 to 30 FPS difference. And you know, despite there being the same graphics card, the same DDR4 RAM, Armour is really loving this i7-12700K. And in King of the Hill of course, where things get way more spicy, infantry combat gave me averages of 80 FPS, compared to about 60 on the 6700K. But now the true test, flying into the middle of the AO in King of the Hill with max players. This yielded me about 35 to 40 FPS, which was compared to about 20 to 30 on the old rig. For me, this was worth the upgrade alone. This new CPU is able to make CPU calculations much more quickly, and when you're playing on a game like Armour where you're usually below 60 FPS, those extra 10 to 15 frames make a massive difference. It makes it so much easier for me to land and, and just react generally. It's like I've been playing in slow motion all of my life until this upgrade. And then Daisy standalone, on full deathmatch servers with 30 to 40 players, I was seeing a difference of roughly 90 FPS, which, I mean, it's just insane. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this. It's actually outpacing my 165 hertz monitor in some cases. And I imagine if you had a 240 hertz monitor, for example, and you bumped your resolution down to 1080p, it would probably run at that rate. I still can't believe how well Daisy standalone runs. It makes such a difference to how much more enjoyable it is to play. Also, just keep your eyes peeled for a video coming from me soon about whether Daisy standalone is still worth playing in 2023, as I I have a lot of love for this game and where it's currently at. On the Daisy rearmed servers, which have 127 player caps, the 12700K achieved between 180 and 200 FPS. Yes, you heard that right. Whereas the 6700K was giving me about 100 to 140 FPS. It never really went above 150. Uh, the most notable difference here though, as you can see, is the FPS lows are much higher 
than they were on my old rig. It's consistently staying above 160 FPS no matter what I throw at it. Or keep in mind in some of the new PC clips, I was playing at night where the draw distance is lower and so naturally the FPS will be higher. I'd probably shave off about 10 to 20 FPS from some of these clips, making it an average of about 160 FPS, which still beats the living hell out of my old rig. Keep in mind, everything you're seeing is running at exactly the same settings. There's the same RAM amount, same GPU, similar motherboard, and only a slightly beefier power supply. This CPU is therefore an absolute monster, but it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Armour Reforger, unfortunately, was the one anomaly in my testing. With the 6700K, I had about 65 FPS in one of everyone's cities by the coast, and 45 to 48 FPS at 120% resolution resampling. However, on the new PC, it somehow performed worse by about 3 to 5 FPS at 120% resampling. In the city, it only improved by 10 to 15 fps which i really wasn't impressed by the fact DayZ is built on the infusion engine and i saw such a gargantuan increase with my older lake cpu suggests that armor reforger still has some optimization to be done so in summary if you play a lot of armor 3 and DayZ like i do and still have an old cpu this may well be a very worthwhile upgrade to make and with the rest of the rtx 4000 series lineup and intel's raptor lake cpus around the Corner. A lot of the components I use to make this PC build will be dropping in price substantially over the next few months. It's sad to see scalpers are taking advantage of the short supply of the RTX 4090s of course, so I'll definitely try and find some good local PC retailers in your area who will be able to get you a fair price for your rig. Thank you for bearing with me on my inconsistent uploads. Uh, I've started my university course to become a lawyer and so, well, things have just been insane. I'm going to try and keep the videos going as best as I can, but hopefully you can all understand. Big thank you to Rue, my patron, and again to Artstorm for the collaboration. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys later.